Hi everyone and welcome to Asta's Sewing School. This is for those of you who have always wanted to sew but haven't ever quite got there. I've shown you how to thread the sewing machine so you can check back to see how you do that. A couple of weeks ago I showed you how to make this beautiful bed comforter or I call it the eco-friendly um, bed throw and it's all beautiful linen, it's lined with beautiful beautiful cotton and it's got a lovely linen lining. Now you can check on how to make that as well. Now that's the real easy easy approach to making something. So that is what is going to be one of the things on my bed, we'll get rid of that. Now this is the other thing that I wanted to show you and I thought that this would be a fantastic project to start for those of you who are just new to sewing because I know that by the time that you have made this your straight stitching will be absolutely perfect. So what it is is it's about two meters of fabric and what I've done is I've lined the back with a nice beautiful quilted silk and then I've padded all of these little wee sows here or little puffy sows with and there's several things that you can use to do that but I used um, lovely wool but anyway it's really really easy to make it does take 30 hours and if you do well I do insist that you do this because you will be an expert sewer by the time you've done all of these first things first you've got to measure the width of your bed and the length of your bed and determine how far you want the little puffy cells to fall down the sides also remember that it is going to be quite heavy when you've got it on your bed so it really only needs to go on the bed but I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished in due course right let's get rid of that now you need as I said some lining or some well you need some backing you also need some top fabric and I've selected this again because I like things to be matching you also need a backing or a lining to go underneath each of the cells you also need some wadding or some padding you can either use the Dacron you don't use feathers I did one with feathers once because feathers are really hard to deal with because if you don't get them all enclosed you'll have feathers all over the house the other thing that you can use is you can use some of this rubber but I don't know about sleeping under rubber I would rather have the dacre on all the wool my personally myself you also need two pieces of card and you need two 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 pieces you need one in a size that suits you my, this piece here is going to be my top sale or my top piece of my fabric and that's eight and a half inches by eight and a half inches by eight and a half inches by eight and a half inches square and the base or template is going to be I think I made that seven and a half by seven and a half so the top one needs to be bigger by depending on how big you want your puffs I've only made this about half an inch because I don't want to have too much in packing in it because it, as I said it gets too heavy right from there the first thing you need to do is to get your fabric and get that all nice and straight and make sure that all your fabric coming together is all nice and straight once you've got your template cut out it's just a matter of laying it down there you could do this the other way around but it doesn't matter I'm just going to do this way and you just need to mark with a pencil or you can use proper dress making chalk but I usually always have a pencil around so that will do me right that needs to all be scored across there then what you need to do is to come back make sure everything is square and the great thing about this project is everything's got to be precise because if it's not and you go to sew everything up which I'll show you in a minute if it's not all squared you're going to hate yourself because all the, if, and I figure that if you're going to do anything do it properly or don't bother doing it at all because it's just a big waste of money and it's all frustrating right once you've done that the next thing is to go across and cut through those marked lines all the way across and then cut up those other lines now as I said it'll depend on how big you make your template as to how much fabric you're going to need and how many you're going to cut out now the one that I did has got 64 little cells that were all cut out before I started so once that is done the next thing is to get your backing and do exactly the same as what we've just done and make 
see this here is not straight so make sure and that there see that there's not straight that's where you're going to waste your fabric so make sure that that is all neat and tidy before you start there's my base template or actually it's my lining I'm going to cut that across there before I start just so that we're all neat and tidy before we get into this project right exactly the same process make sure that this is square and this is square and then just take that through to there take that one through to there and I'll go right across here because I don't want to be wasting and the other thing is might I suggest that you do all of this before get all your squares all your templates everything all done before you actually start sewing because it is so fiddly if you don't get it right okay from there cutting that out like so and that's pretty much your first process getting these all cut and ready to go so I will be back in a moment and I'm going to show you how to get the pleating and how to put these together I love these projects there you go because it's actually going to be like a little heirloom piece I'll see you in a moment Welcome back. All of my squares have been cut and it's now time to put them together. Right, put them in front of you. That there is your lining or your base, your base template. Then what you need to do is to get the top layer and bring both those edges, that edge and that edge together and put a pin in it. Now get the next one, take that across to that corner like so. Do it again over to here, bringing your edges and your little those little points together. And as I said before, every single thing that you do now has to be all very precise and all neat and tidy. Right, from there the next thing is to take your fabric along and to put a little pleat or a little fold there. From there, you go around to the other side and you do exactly the same, pulling that tight and making sure that all that edge and that edge are nice and lined up. And then we'll go around to this side and we'll do exactly the same. Now you could go through and mark these in the middle, but you know, you don't really need to do that. For goodness sake, we haven't got all day to do this. Okay, so from there, the next thing to do is to and leave one of the little sow, each of the sows open. Now the next thing is to sew along there to that point there, turn it around, come across to here, and then come across to here, and then back stitch each time that you do it, so that when you go to fill them up, the stitching doesn't come away. Now with the magic of a television, I've actually done that, and here they are here. So that's one that I've done now you can't really see that stitching and I thought I had one in black here but however I don't here's one we'll look at this one here as an example so that's where I've done see how I've back stitched across there a down to there across to there and then up to there now once you have done that it's a matter of bringing two together make sure that you leave the open those bits there open once you've sewn those two together it's then a matter of sewing the next lot together making sure that that's open and that's open you get those together like that and then bring those together and these as I keep going on and I have to say this make sure that all of your edges all come together because if that is like that and you go to sew them all up together you are not going to like yourself because that won't match up so bring that to there pin across there so lots and lots and lots of pinning and then I always like to put a little bit of a pin in the middle as well right once you've done that it's just a matter of sewing those all up like I've done here so keep going until they're all sewn up now as I said mine is eight cells by eight cells eight cells across eight cells down so what I did was I did mine in bands of eight inch strips once you've done that it's then a matter of bringing the next lot of cells and then pinning those as I did there along there so that you then will have double right once you've got to that stage it's then a matter of putting the padding in and I'll be back in a minute to show you how to do that 
Now we're up to the good bit. So once you've cut them out, sewn them all together, done double layers, make sure, as I said, to keep these little cells all the same way because you'll know if they're wrong because it, you'll have to unpick it. Okay, the next thing is to do the wadding or the Dacron or the wool, or if you wanted to, you could use the foam here. But oh, I've got to tell you about that foam makes it terrible mess all over the place. Right, the next thing to do is to get your little wad of Dacron and that just gets put into there like so. Now the more you put in, the bigger the puff. Personally I think that that's too much so I only need half of that and I'll just pull that to pieces. This isn't a very good quality that I'm using, it actually came with flowers the other day because I forgot to go and get it but this, will, this is okay for now. Right, you just go into each of these little cells like so and then go do fill all of them up first before you go any further then it's a matter of putting another pin there bringing another pin to there and then recreating that next little fold there to close it up so you just continue in that manner until I'll do another one here just to show you to there then bring that to there and actually the other thing I should show you is see where you've got that double layer in there between that layer that cell and that cell there what I do is I open that up and then pin down there and what will happen is you won't have such big thick 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 um, steams so that to there put the next one to there and you keep going until the whole whole lot of those little cells have all been filled with your Dacron. The other thing you can do with the Dacron is you can get really big thick waddy stuff. What I did was I used the template here and just lay that all on the Dacron and you can cut it all out or it's just rip it off to whatever you want. Right from there next once you've done all that all your cells have been um, filled up they've all been stitched across there it's just a matter of getting each of your cells and I'll get rid of all of this right now because I want to show you from here because it's easier. So as I said I had double so I did two together and then I did another two so so that two and that two together and it's easier to work in small portions than to just have one and then sew across and then do another strip and sew it across because it gets really really heavy and when it comes to bringing everything together you are your best to get somebody to help you now from there the next thing is once all that's been done what I did was I laid it down and then and I've shown you how to do this lots and lots of times this is when it comes to do sort of like your enveloping or to apply your backing or to do your bagging out and you can see that in lots of things that I've done so that there the backing just gets put onto the right side and I think somewhere I have here it is so you just bring your two right sides together and then stitch all around leave a really big opening because you've got to get all of those puffs out through there and then that's just once you've done that like clip your edges as I've shown you lots of other times and then the, this is really easy doing it this way but you did not want to see me struggling but anyway make sure you clip your edges and then turn the invert that to right sides like so and then you'll have to give it a good shake out when you get to the other end and then on here get rid of all of that when you have it where you've turned it in actually you can't see it because I've hand sewed it but where I've turned it the right sides down here I actually hand stitched that there are still just a little wee few loose ends of fabric but that's okay so once you get to there let's turn it over let's have a look at it and I need to show you two things that I told you right at the beginning that were really really vital when I said that everything had to meet up and be absolute precise edges to edges the reason I wanted to, I told you that was because this here, when you see there, I've got, these are all neat and tidy running this way, but it's when you bring your cells together that if you are not in the right alignment, this is what will happen. But I was able to fudge the whole thing by just pulling it a little as I went. But to me, that really annoys me because that's not nice and neat. So that line should just be running through there. But anyway, it doesn't really matter because you can't see it. It'll annoy me. It won't annoy you because it won't be on your bed. But really, really lovely heirloom piece, really lovely and warm easy to make and it will make you into an expert sewer because soon we're going on to making 
frocks and all sorts of garments. I hope you've enjoyed that. I've really enjoyed showing you how to do it. I will see you another day.